Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Get Help Training. My name is Jeff Bradbury, your Google certification trainer, and today I have with me Trevor. Trevor, how are you today? Doing great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yourself? I am doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I work at a university here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I am a Google evangelist for our university, as well as I work in our web services department. I've been pretty much a Google guy for probably about five years. Excellent. Now, I'm so glad that you're here today because a few weeks ago, you and I had met on our Google Groups forum, and I had posted a question that came to me, and I wanted to do a show about it, and here's how the question went. My superintendent came to me and said, I want you to create a way for a teacher to fill out a Google form and output it into a professional development certificate. And we were talking about many, many ways to do this right and many, many ways to right. do this wrong. And what ended up taking me ultimately six or seven hours to do, you said, Jeff, this is a five minute process. Trevor, how do we do this? Well, let me explain how I do my system. Uh, I teach the mostly professional development for faculty and staff at the university. And one of the things I like to do is try and demonstrate that not only can Google Apps do the word processing spreadsheets and stuff like that, but how we can take that farther along. And before add-ons came on, they were all called scripts. And there was a great add-on or script called uh, um, Autocrat. Froze up there in my head for a sec. Autocrat. Basically, it's like doing a word merge um, piece. So instead of doing a merge letter, I'm actually going to be merging certificates. And I looked at this as a two-step process. One of the things I want to do is, first of all, is obviously create these certificates for people. And I want to try and automate the process as much as possible. I don't want to, I want to be totally hands off. But at the same time, I also wanted to build in a way for to, to collect evaluations from people. And that actually ended up being a second step uh, because of the evaluations that I wanted to do had to be separate from how I was doing the certificate only because I wanted the evaluations to be anonymous. So that's pretty much where things started. And I played around for quite a while and I'm going to do a screen share in a sec here and then we're going to show you exactly the steps I'm going to take for the first part of creating the certificate. Now this is a really, really cool thing that you're going to show us here. Now I'll, I'll tell you, I got a lot of help from this. Uh, Nick, who's out there watching this show, Thank you so much. He showed us how to set up Autocrat, but the problem that we had with Autocrat was that you couldn't mass produce it. You couldn't duplicate the process. And frankly, that's where it took me the six hours. And I'm so happy that you're here. Trevor, why don't you do a screen share and show us how this works? So with a certificate, what, we, uh, what I do is I start off with a pre-filled form. And this is the way we're gonna be collecting the information. But at the same time, I wanna make sure I have consistency as far as the name of the form and the date. I've seen people when they're using pre-filled form, you kind of depend on every student to fill out the name properly. I don't like to do that. I like to make sure they don't have to do any work. So we'll do a pre-filled form. Then we're gonna generate a certificate or look at the certificate. And then we'll take a look at Autocrat, the add-on and the work that it does. So to start off, I have a template. This is my certificate template. And the parts that I really want you to notice is first name, last name, the session and the date. And you notice how they all have those uh, less than and greater than signs. There's two of them in the front and two of them in the back. We've seen this in Microsoft Word. This is my template and where we have those brackets and the first name in is where we're going to say, hey, I want the first name to go here. I want the last name to go here. Pretty straightforward. So this is the template of my certificate. And I usually do that first up. This is a copy of the form that I get my students to fill out after they've completed the, the session. So I give them a link, usually a Google, using a Google shortener link, and this is, comes in. And you'll notice that the joy of Google Apps and the date is already filled out. So I actually use this form here for every class that I teach. But the only thing that changes is I put in what's going to go into the name of the session and what's going to go into the date of the session. So those are always changing, but the form itself remains the same. So I'm going to show you how I create those pre-filled forms. This is the edit field, or sort of the edit version of the, the same form. And everyone's familiar with all the different pieces and, and stuff. What a lot of people aren't familiar with is if you go into responses, get pre-filled URL. What that does will bring up a new window like this, and you go in and pre-fill whatever fields you want. 
So under the name of the session, I can put in anything I want here. So um, talk about Google Apps, July 23rd, 2015. This is the information I want. And then all I have to do is submit it. That's my, so it says answer questions you want, pre-fail, and then submit. And I'm clicking on this. This link here, if I copy that, will generate the link that I give to my students. So now when I go to, and I'll open up a new tab, and this is the link the students get. And you'll notice up top here, talk about Google Apps. Uh, apparently I didn't put in the P's in that. There's the date in that. These entry numbers, that's the kind of the identifier for the actual field. So what it's saying is for this field, put in this piece of data here. For this field, put in this piece of data here. So when I give the link to the students, there's the form. And of course, my typo is, shows up there as well. But that's how I would fill out the pre-filled form. So that, that allows me to have the consistency that goes into there. And what I'm doing is I'm putting my G Trainer demo uh, account that I've created for, for Barney there so that we can look at later on what he's done. And also, as part of the, the form that they fill out, I ask them, would you like me to contact you about other stuff? So I act, end up taking people who say yes here, and I add their names to a Google group so that I can do a follow-up. So, you know, the listserv kind of a functionality there. So let's take a quick look at the data then. Does that make sense so far with Jeffrey? Absolutely. And this does not seem difficult at all. No, that part's, it's, it's really, really easy. So here's my form. I've, uh, I'm just going to move this back over here. You can see last name, first name. I've got some information here. Anything that's in blue is what I have submitted. So there's Barney's information, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to here. Now you'll notice some, some data here that I haven't done anything with. And this is actually where AutoCrad itself comes in and generates a copy of that certificate doing the merge. Okay, so remember that merge certificate. I have a first name, last name, and all that stuff here. What I do first is I go into add-ons. And if you don't have it, go get add-ons and you're looking for something called AutoCrat. Now I'm gonna launch AutoCrat so you can see what it's like once it initially launches. And I've already actually pre-launched it here so we don't have to wait for it. And as you can see here, I already have the certificate of attendance in place. I can create a new merge job anytime I want. So I can have actually a number of documents uh, created that run depending on the information, depending on different requirements. In this case, I'm just doing my certificate of attendance. So I'm just gonna edit this so you guys can see what I've done. I'll make an edit point here. No, I, I know, that's why I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> All right, again, give it a couple seconds. Okay. So in the first step that happens, it's gonna ask you to choose a template because I've already created this. Uh, it kind of skips right to the, uh, the second step. But all you do under the choose template is point it to that template of the certificate you have. Once you've identified the template to use, then they go to the next step, which is this page here. So it says, what is the sheet that contains the data that you want to merge to your certificate? Typically, if you're using the Google form, it's going to be form responses one. Now, first name, last name, session date, those are all the tags. And you'll notice the, the brackets there. That's the name of the tags that we had in our certificate. First name, last name, session, and date. Notice it just says date there. These are the different heads of the data in the sheets. First name, last name, name of session. In this case, it says date of session. What we do is just mix and match. I want this, uh, whatever data is here, to fall in place to wherever it shows up on that certificate. And that's pretty much all I need to do. In the next step, it asks, what, how do you want to save the file? Because it's going to make a file first. You can pull all this information by copying and pasting, building whatever file name you want. I typically do name of session 
and then the first and last name, and then the date of the session. So that way I can quickly go through a session and look up who's got a certificate there. But you could use anything. If you wanted to put first name, uh, last name, or last name, first name as the first item, you could do that. So this is a customized file name. The next step is how do you want to save the file? Because your choices are either a Google Doc or a PDF. Now I've heard people talk that they've had problems with the generation of these things using PDFs. So what I do is I say, you know what, I'm gonna make this a Google Doc and I put in instructions when I want to email of how they can download it. So you'll notice there's a thing here, the checkbox, do you wanna email it? So I've checked it off. Who do you wanna email it to? Well, I'm gonna use the email address that they supplied. So that's where that comes from. There's my subject line, the certificate of attendance. And then I basically went inside here and put in a little piece of text. Now with the text, um, it'll, it, there, you'll notice here it says name of session. This actually is grabbing data from the spreadsheet for this particular individual and substituting it here. So as different people have different classes, their, their different session names will show up there. So that's basically the email that gets sent to the student. You also have a choice of what kind of document are they going to be able to get. In this case, I'm just going to say, you know what, you get a, uh, a link to a view only Google Doc. Because I don't want you to go in and making changes and stuff. It's view only. Now, you can make it editable. You can do all sorts of different stuff. I like the view only functionality. Notice as part of my, fun uh, part of my email, I say, you can save a copy of this document by selecting download from the file menu and select PDF as your format. And then I give them a notice that says, hey, you got 30 days to, before I remove it. So that's the email and that's the saving part. Under advanced functions, I can have conditional merge options. So let's say, for example, I have a column that I manually go in and say, yes, this, per uh, this person's been approved to get this certificate. So I could have a, a different column and in that column approved, maybe is the name is equal to yes. Those are the only ones that are gonna get generated. Because of the certificate, and this is just an example of showing people how to do the certificate, I don't bother. I just say, you know what, If uh, I just run everything when the time comes. Where do you want these files uh, stored, these certificates? I created a folder called Created Certificates. I dumped it all in there. You can add a secondary folder key, which basically means I could put all the, uh, all the uh, each individual session or course name would have its own folder, but I don't bother again because they're already named. I can search through for what I want. Here's the important parts. Run Autocrat when new forms are submitted. So as soon as someone submits a form, it will run this script. And then run Autocrat at a set interval time. Sometimes what happens is if you get too many people trying to hit that, uh, hit Google with a form, it won't be able to run all of them right away. So what I do as a backup is I say, you know what, run it every four hours. Cause it's only gonna run on pieces that have not been uh, ran before. Once that's done, you just hit save and you're back in business. Jeffrey, any questions so far? No, that's actually really good advice about having that backup system there. That wasn't something that I was originally putting in with mine. And I, I wasn't even aware of the fact that Google and Autocrat could jam up. So that is a really good piece of advice. Yeah, I don't know if it's Google itself or it's the Autocrat or whatever, because actually it's it's anytime there's other different add-ons that, that use the on submit function that's been built into the script. And I've heard or read people who've said that, you know, they've had problems it didn't it didn't run or jam. So that's why I always put in that, you know, run it after so many hours and let her go. My other question so here that's is you pretty much my sorry, go ahead. My other question here is you had said that they get deleted after 30 days. Are you really going into your folder and deleting these manually? No, I just know that a lot of people tend to go in and uh, they'll get an email and then they just forget about it. So if I give them a little, you know, little nudge to say, you know, you got 30 days to, down, to, to make a copy of this and print it off and stuff. Otherwise, they kind of forget about it. And it's always nice, like I say to people, this certificate means nothing. It's Trevor's certificate just to demonstrate it. I said, but I mean, it's kind of cool if you put it up, at least it, it shows people and they all go, people who walk by can say, oh, you got a certificate. Oh, Trevor's teaching classes. Oh, maybe I should take something. So I kind of think of it as like free publicity. So just the last bit here, as I mentioned, anything in the blue here is, is the form. This is what uh, 
Autocrat does. And Autocrat generates a certificate I, or the ID of the certificate and actually gives me a link. So anytime I want to see Barney Rubble's certificate, I can just click on his link. And sure enough, this certifies that Barney Rubble attended Talk About Google Apps on July 23rd, 2015. And that pretty much is it. And there we can see his, the file itself has gotten created in my folder called Created Certificates. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. So Trevor, that is pretty easy to do, but you've taken this to a next level. You've actually created a system where people can individually uh, rate their professors. Is that true? Yeah, um, it's there's a second step to the process. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you understand this step first, that's great. Then, you know, maybe in the next session we can talk about the second step. But what happens is I use a, an add-on called Formule, which is a really powerful. I mean, if you want to add email functionality to your forms, because by default there is none, a Formule is, is the way to go. And what Formule does is, Basically, it'll just email out information based on, again, what's in those uh, fields and stuff. What I've done is understanding how that form is set up and created. Um, like, remember, we had the, the different fields and then the field number, and then there was the field uh, content in that. When you recognize what all that's done, you can actually, again, pre-populate that for the evaluation. So that's why the students themselves don't have to, to redo it. We already know that they took this course. I just copy that information and I repurpose it. And what Formula can do is it also do on submit. So uh, if again, if I, someone fills out a form, if I wanted to, I could have an email sent back to them saying, you know, thanks for submitting the form. Here's the information we've collected from you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But instead what I do is I have it run at the end of the day. So if someone fills out the evaluate or sorry the certificate because everyone wants a certificate, at the end of the day, uh, at a preset time, Google will then email out another message to everyone saying, "Hey, you know, you got your certificate, and if you'd like to help me out, I'd like you to fill out this form uh, for a feedback." It's it's totally anonymous, and so they actually end up going to a different form altogether where they don't have to put their name or email address in or anything like that, and then they can fill it out, and I get the valuation without uh, without names and stuff. Well, we will definitely have to have you back on this show to show us how to do all that stuff. And if you're watching, check back out later for Get Help Training. Trevor, thank you so much for taking the time to show us all this stuff. Autocrat has absolutely saved my time and saved uh, thousands of other teachers' times trying to go from point A to point B really, really simple and really, really quickly. One last time, Trevor, where can people get a hold of you to learn more about this? Well, uh, my website is www.trevorbeck.ca. Uh, you can find me on Google Plus um, as well as within the forums, of course. Uh, those are the pretty much the, the basic places that you'll find me hanging around. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we'll be back sometime soon with another episode of Get Help Training. Until then, my name is Jeff Bradbury reminding you to take care of your students and have a great time in your classrooms.